Hello everyone. Welcome to 360 on History, your one-stop resource for blogs, podcasts and videos on science, history and nature. Please check out the website 360onhistory.com, join us on social media and subscribe to 360 on History podcast on YouTube. You can also subscribe to the audio version wherever you get your podcasts. Just living isn't enough, said the butterfly. One must have sunshine, freedom and a little flower. Hans Christian Andersen Today, let's enjoy those most beautiful, the most familiar of all insects, the butterflies. We can learn something about them, but if nothing else, we can enjoy looking at some awesome specimens. Perhaps no other creature brings out a sense of happiness and even freedom than the butterfly. And perhaps this is why so many of us like to imprint this insect permanently on our skins as tattoos. Their beautiful wings creating a flash of color as they flitter by are a sure sign of the coming of spring and of general well-being. Ancient Egyptians depicted butterflies in their art 3,500 years ago. And the Mesoamericans of Teotihuacan carved brilliantly colored images on temples and jewelry. We have depicted them in art, in jewelry, in fact on anything we needed to decorate. Of course, who can forget Alice meeting the hookah smoking caterpillar during her adventures in Wonderland in Lewis Carroll's famous book. Many ancient cultures like the Japanese, the Aztecs and the Romans consider butterflies the personification of the soul and the Japanese also considered them a bad omen. The Naga people of India and Myanmar claim to be descended from a butterfly. Aristotle's word for them was psyche or soul. In Christianity, the life cycle of the butterfly represents spiritual transformation and in images of the Garden of Eden, it is a symbol for Adam's soul. According to an Irish saying, butterflies are the souls of the dead waiting to pass through purgatory. Clearly, this gorgeous creature has been associated with that most precious element of being human, the soul, for a very long time. Generally, the earliest known fossils of butterflies are from 40 to 50 million years ago, from what is known as the Eocene Epoch. Although some theories suggest that they originated during the Cretaceous period between 145 to 66 million years ago. Their evolution and development is closely linked to the development of flowering plants. However, a new study from 2018 found the oldest fossilized remains from the order to which butterflies belong. These fossils, mostly wing scales, are 200 million years old and are from the Triassic-Jurassic period which links them to non-flowering plant, which were dominant at this time. So possibly, butterflies and the proboscis that they used to suck out nectar evolved before flowering plants. Another study looked at 200 million year old fossilized wing scales to show that colors in Lepidoptera wings were present since the time and were possibly a basis for diverse communication strategies. Did you know that there are around 17,500 species of butterfly in the world? Along with moths, they belong to the order Lepidoptera and both are the only insects to have scales on their wings. Butterflies are also able to co coil up their proboscis. Maya Angelou said, We delight in the beauty of the butterfly, but rarely admit the changes it has gone through. To achieve that beauty. Yes, a butterfly is also the icon of metamorphosis, perhaps because the difference in its life cycle stages is so compelling. Female adults lay eggs on the leaves of specific host plants and when they hatch, the larvae first eat the eggshells and then start feeding on the host plant leaf. Caterpillars are the larvae of both butterflies and moths and are themselves very distinctive. Many are easier to identify than their adults are. We all know that they eat leaves voraciously and shed their skin a number of times, sometimes even changing colors and appearance. After a while, 
the caterpillar attaches itself to a twig or a wall and becomes a pupa or chrysalis and this is where the magic happens. Inside this sac-like structure, a lot is going on. The body of the caterpillar is essentially broken down and rearranged into the wings, body and legs of the butterfly. This stage may last for a few days or for more than a year depending on the species. Many butterfly species overwinter or hibernate as pupae. Butterflies feed on the nectar of flowers and are very important pollinators. But did you know that they also feed on moisture from rotten fruit, dung, decomposing organic matter and even corpses? They also like to gather on mud puddles or wet sandy areas to sip mineral rich water. This is called puddling and males do this more often than females. This could be perhaps because they pass on the nutrients gathered to the females to help with egg production. Basically, butterflies try to extract nutrients like sodium and amino acids from any liquid. Remember, they can only suck up their food through those proboscis we mentioned earlier. Male butterflies release pheromones and some even do a little dance to attract a female and then soon die after mating. This seems to be the fate of many males in the insect world. Being cold-blooded, they have to bask in the sun to increase their body temperatures and hibernate in protected spaces during winter. This hibernation can take place during any stage of their life cycle depending on the species. The four wings on each side of the body are connected in such a way that they can move independently, allowing for a wide variety of flight patterns and experienced butterfly watchers can often identify species from these patterns. They also have excellent vision, which enables them to fly with precision. Several species migrate, but the best example of butterfly migration is that undertaken by the monarch in North America, which is widely known to migrate in autumn to overwintering sites in California and Mexico, a round trip distance of 4,000 miles. They cover the distance south in two months and overwinter there. Few of the original adults actually complete the trip home. Instead, the females mate and lay eggs along the way and their offspring finish this incredible journey. The thousands of butterflies hanging from trees in their southern destinations is a gorgeous, gorgeous sight. By the way, monarch butterflies have been bred on the International Space Station. Found in every habitat from the tropical forest to deserts, to grasslands to tundra, you can see them almost anywhere in the world because they live on every continent except Antarctica. The average lifespan of an adult butterfly is probably around one month. If they are not eaten by predators, that is. The smallest butterflies may live only a week or so, while a few species, such as monarchs, can live up to nine months. They are highly sensitive indicators of the health of the environment, being pollinators of plants, and they play crucial roles in the food chain. Birds and other insects prey on butterflies and caterpillars, so they have developed camouflage and mimicry techniques for protection. Many caterpillars are green in color to blend in with leaves, for example, and some larvae, particularly those in the tropics, bear a resemblance to bird droppings a disguise that makes them unappealing to predators. Some butterflies may look like dead leaves on a twig when they are at rest when, with their wings closed. The underwing markings of the comma and question mark butterflies help them to go unnoticed when hibernating in leaf litter. And some have markings that resemble eyes of birds to scare off predators. Queen Alexandra's bird wing found in the forest of the Oro region in Papua New Guinea, is the largest butterfly in the world, with females reaching wingspans of 25 centimeters or 9.8 inches. It is an ind endangered species and its international trade is illegal. Here's a fun fact. Study of the coloration of the wing scales of swallowtail butterflies has led to the development of more efficient light-emitting diodes and is inspiring nanotechnology research to produce paints that do not use toxic pigments 
and the development of new display technologies. So basically they are helping us improve our televisions and computer screens. Nature is truly amazing. I get some amazing butterflies in my garden like the peacock, painted lady, tortoise shell, common blue and brimstone and I'm very grateful for their visits. I hope you've had some fun looking at the images of these glorious of all creatures and have learned a little bit more about them. See you again soon. Cheers.